Hello everybody and welcome to 3 Every Rugby on Forever Sports for today's five things learned from the second round of the 2021 Six Nations. We saw France and Wales continue their winning form. We saw um, England getting back to winning ways. Um, and basically this is just a sort of five big sort of standout moments or, or things that we took away from the weekend that we can hopefully look to expand on as we move forward. Um, and just a couple of things that we picked up. Obviously there's a lot more things that we didn't cover, but these were sort of the five sort of standout moments um, from across the weekend. Before we go any further and look at them, please do subscribe to the channel, bottom right hand corner there. Smash a like on the video if you like this type of content. Let me know what your thoughts were of the weekend's um, performances down in the comments below. And without any further ado, let's head over to number one. Right, so if you're asking Wales whether they care about the, about the fact that their two wins out of two came against 40 men, they're going to tell you that they don't. And no, should they be, Eddie, because you can talk about the fact that maybe they didn't deserve it, the fact that they didn't necessarily play particularly well to, to, and, and stuff, all that kind of thing. At the end of the day, Wales are currently tied on top of the log. Two wins out of two, you know, three matches away from a Six Nations Grand Slam, you know, which is not very likely, to be honest. We all know that I think that they've maybe sort of um, have benefited by what's, by what's going on in their games. But at the end of the day, you know, what are they supposed to do? It's two red cards in two games. Both of them deserved. And Wales have just reaped the benefits of it. And at the end of the day, you you, you have to just you, all you can do as a team is beat what is in front of you. And all Wales have done as a team is beat what is in front of them. And you know a win against Ireland and Scotland is nothing to to sort of turn your lip at. And and that's why I think that look they haven't been phenomenal. We haven't necessarily seen the sort of the Warren Gatlin Wales yet. But at the end of the day, they've still got the points on the board, and that's what makes it. Um, count the most you look at Ireland and think well they played pretty well for two games guess what they're on two points it doesn't matter at the end of the day performances come second to results in a tournament like the Six Nations when you're only playing five games you know if you're looking at a whole sort of league it's like sort of you know 13 14 15 matches then yes you can start saying you know you can't afford to play badly every game but in such a short tournament points are points are points are points so if you can have a bad performance and still Get the victory. That counts more than anything. Now, lots of people are sort of saying that we've seen this before, that we've seen some good moments from Italians before. But I genuinely think Stephen Varney and Paolo Garbizzi are the real deal. This weekend, we saw Franco Smith's side look very, very competent on attack and beginning to look more like a, a proper rugby uh, team all around, you know. They looked a lot more structured. Defensively, I think still quite um, poor, to be honest. And I think that the defensive structures will need a lot of work. But on the attack, you're looking at a side which genuinely broke down England um, and scored two very good tries. And I think that you look at somebody like pa um, Paolo Garbizzi, the fact that he's been given this responsibility 20 years old with such little experience speaks to the amount of talent he has. And Franco Smith has clearly said, he doesn't really, I mean, he hasn't said it, but he's, he's clearly sort of thought in his mind, that results are secondary to what he's building at Italy at the moment. And what he is building is a side that will hopefully be able to not necessarily compete, but be able to be more competitive in a year or two. It's a very inexperienced side. And I thought Stephen Varney and Paolo Gobbizzi again showed some very, very good signs this weekend that they could become a world-class partnership. The fact of the matter is that, you know, 19, 20 years old, playing together, they're going to have four or five years of test rugby before they're even in their prime. You know, that's what we're talking about. And when you get to that sort of experience, when you've been playing test rugby for five, six years, and now suddenly coming into your best years, what a privilege that is going to be to watch. And I genuinely think if they can start adding a couple of other players around them, that they could really build a side which could hopefully beat England for the first time, for example, maybe finish third or second in the Six Nations, maybe get to the quarterfinals, semifinals of a World Cup, you know, and just try and sort of be generally more competitive. I do think that they are improving. And I do think Franco Smith is genuinely on something with the Italian side. So watching France is a lot about, you know, the excitement they bring with, with, with some of the attacking rugby they do, something like Anton Dupont, how he, you know, he can provide outrageous assists, you know, we've got some really good centers, um, some really good wings, some really good finishes, and a really watchable side. But over the weekend, we saw that their rugged defense and the fact that Ireland could not break them down is actually their best asset. And I think that was something, when we're looking at that French side, I think any team would watch that performance and think, this is actually a very difficult side to beat. Um, you know, because if you can only, if you, can, if you are continuously limiting a side to, you know, 10 to 15 points every game or to 10 points and you're not conceding any tries, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, that's tough to beat. 
you know, because if they can then just find a way to score a try with you maybe over committing, maybe on a counter attack, something like that, you know, it makes for a very effective brand of rugby. And I think what we see from France is not necessarily just a good defence, but a really, really physical defence. I mean, Ireland in the last couple of minutes had to try and get from the 40 metre line to the try line. By the time France won the match, they had pushed um, Ireland back 20 metres got the restart, I mean, got the, got the turnover and kicked it out. And that kind of sort of demonstrated just how good that French defense has become. Um, and you look at the tackle statistics, and their players just aren't missing tackles. You know, Ray Aldred, Paul Willemse, um, Bernard Leroux, they're just not missing their tackles. And it's become so effective because if you can just make all your tackles, you know, you just don't concede points. And that is what is going to be one of the key things for France in the rest of the tournament. Right, so after a disappointing start to the tournament being outbeat, out, outplayed by, by Scotland, England brought back in fly half George Ford and he made a, an enormous difference. He is a genuine fly half, you know, and I think that Owen Farrell is a really good player. I think he's, but I do think that Ford is a proper, proper fly half. You know, the way he marshals the team, the way he controls games, his tactical kicking is much better. He just brings a whole different dynamic to that England side. And I think he was very instrumental in both their tries. In just the way he reads the game, the way that he can pin teams back, um, he's just, it's just so much more effective. And you've still got the class of Owen Farrell outside. You're very physical, regardless of his very poor te um, tackle technique. You know, can kick. And having also having a, 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 a pretty much a second pivot at inside center is, is a huge game changer because it just suddenly means that you can play off 10 and you can play off 12. And that's a really, really good asset to have. So I just, I mean, look, going forward, I mean, it was, it was, it was unlike... Um, Eddie Jones to leave him out in the, in the in the first test, but looking at the performance, yes, it was against Italy. It is very very obvious that George Ford has to start for England if they want to play their best rugby. They might not have won this weekend, but I think you, you could arguably say it had they not received that red card to Zana Ferguson, who by the way has actually been banned for the rest of the tournament. So for a lot of the comments that were made about how to the poor decision, it wasn't a red card, he's actually banned for the rest of the tournament. And that has been the verdict by um, a by the, the disciplinary committee. But I think if that moment that moment was a sort of a watershed moment, which allowed Wales right back into the game and they did complete that comeback. Had they not, I think Scotland go on to win that game. And I still think that they are genuine contenders because we are seeing a much, much better Scottish side than we have seen in the last couple of years. I mean, across the park, you look at the back line, you know, and you're seeing Stuart Hogg playing some of his best rugby. When Finn Russell's on song, you know, he can be devastating. Andy Price is playing pretty well at, at number nine. You've got Duran van der Merby, who's a really good finisher out on the wing. In the pack, Hamish Watson is arguably the, one of the most informed forwards in the world. You know, I think it's a really, really good Scottish side, which really ticks so many boxes. And I think that they, if they can really sort of step up their game, it's going to come down to this weekend. They are up against France. If they can get a win this weekend, why can't they go and, and, and do it? You know, why can't they um, and do something special? Especially because they're playing against France. Sunny Bowe's entire tournament open. You know, um, if, I mean, if Wales beat England, they'll go right ahead, assuming if, if France do lose. But if England beat Wales and suddenly Scotland beat France, the Six Nations is really, really close all of a sudden and comes down to the last two weeks, which is exactly what we want to see. So I, for one, am definitely rooting for a Scotland and probably an England win this weekend just to make the competition really, really um, close. But overall, I do think that Scotland are looking a lot better and there's no reason why they can't push right to the end and maybe make do something a little bit special. Um, that's what we picked up. Let me know what you thought of the round down in the comments below. Smash like on the video. As I said, please do subscribe. My name is Stephen and I'll chat to you soon.